on my fingers. Fixing it. A little more than maintenance. Oh, my fingers are full. It hurts. So the whole back of my forge fell apart yesterday. All the lining fell off, the refractory cement lining fell off of the insa wool lining on like about an eight by eight inch section, which is the biggest chunk I've ever had fall apart because I've been keeping really good care of my forge and uh, the rest of the forge is in really good condition on the inside. Well, at least I thought it was, but the whole back fell apart. Well, so we took the top off this morning because the forge needed to cool last night. The whole top lid that I'd made was completely falling into the forge and just fell apart in crumbs, basically. I don't know, I'm gonna have to make a new permanent or long-term top at some point, but for now, I gotta go pick up some more K-wool and uh, we're just gonna do a temporary K-wool top, uh, into wool top on it that probably won't last very long just because the top of the forge also gets a lot of abuse. It needs to be some kind of cast refractory or something up there on top. Have to do that another day. So yeah, I'm getting ready to go pick that stuff up. I gotta run to Springfield. I just got done patching up the back of the forge with some castable refractory of some sort. It's it's some lower temp stuff, so I need to try to get it drying while I'm gone. Dad's putting a heat gun on it right now, and then when I get back, we'll probably put a layer of Satanite refractory over the castable refractory, because that castable stuff's only rated for like 2200, which is the same as what the cable is actually rated for. So it's just using it for volume because I'm kind of running out of Satanite too. So put it on there for volume, let it dry. When I get back, I'll put a thin layer of Satanite over the top of that and then put the cut out a little square or something that I can stick on top of the forge as a temporary lid. And then we should be able to start forging that second billet. And the first one can actually be reprocessed now. It needs to be ground and uh, four weighed. That part of the billet will be pretty much done. Bye. <laughs> we are headed to Granger's to pick up some insa wool slash kale wool slash fiber blanket stuff. <laughs> Ordered some like a week ago or something. I'm gonna pick it up in store, got a 25 foot roll. Two foot tall, 25 feet long, inch thick, eight pound density. Gonna be nice having a full blown roll sitting there for when the forge breaks and stuff like right now. <laughs> Just could have had it a little earlier, would have been nice so I didn't have to stop everything and go get it. But we also need it because we're gonna be building a forge for this this sword project. We're gonna build a, a big forge out of a barrel or something barrel size, like a 55 gallon drum, just for normalizing and heating the blade up for quenching it. That's all the forge is gonna be for, just for doing those two things. All the actual Damascus forging and stuff should take place in my normal forge. Since the back all fell apart on it, I needed to make the back door a little bigger anyway for this project. Kinda was gonna have to do some work on it anyway and it just happened to fall apart on its own. So while I'm redoing the back of the forge since it fell apart, I'm making the door quite a bit bigger and uh, trying to make it big enough so I can stick my sword through there and do this whole project. Trying to get the door about two and three quarter inches or so wide in the back because it was about two inches and that, that wasn't quite wide enough to do everything I'm gonna need to do with the sword, sticking it through the forge. Theoretically, you don't even need like a, a long oven or anything to do a sword. Uh, I know of a couple guys who've laid their forges on their side and just stood above it and let gravity keep the sword straight, pick it up and down and through the forge and heat up the whole thing pretty evenly. I don't think we're gonna do that. We might end up doing that, but I think we're probably gonna build that drum forge for that. A lot of my excitement came for the sword after getting it drawn on paper. So once I saw the whole drawing there, I was like, I could physically see the sword and almost feel myself picking it up off the paper and accidentally jabbing it through the ceiling because of how big it is. <laughs> but yeah, just it's a humongous, giant, giant canvas to to work my art on, so that's really exciting too. I'll be really, really relieved once I get the blade done because that the blade is, there's so many new things on the blade. It's kind of terrifying and there's a lot depending on getting this sword done in a certain amount of time. So that's, that's kind of nerve wracking too. I need to get the sword done in two and a half to three months or so. It's gonna have a wooden sheath that's lined on the outside with uh, leather, and it might have a throat and tip, not really sure. And then the inside will be lined with um, probably some kind of felt or something. I uh, ordered some insulol, and it should be in here now. What's that under? Uh, Kyle Royer. Thank you. You guys have a good day. Yeah, you too. 
back to the forge again. You want some K-Wool for a really good price? Check out Granger's because I got this 25 foot roll that's two foot tall, an inch thick for $134. And they ship it to the store for free if you wanna do a store pickup. Nothing on the internet anywhere came close to that, that reasonable of a price. A lot of the stuff I looked at price-wise was like double that pretty much. Uh, like Amazon, you can get a bunch of different stuff on Amazon, but it's like a lot more expensive on there. So yeah, I found this out at Granger just recently and it was like an amazing find. I'll definitely be buying lots more. And they, they have a bunch of different sizes too, guys. They've got four foot high, there was 12 inch, they got two inch thick stuff. I think they even have like the different insta wool board and, and stuff like that too. Not a sponsor, but man, oh man. Super impressed so far with their selection on that as far as and the price. I decided to take a little detour to Mickey D's and get a little breakfast because I haven't really had any today and I'm kind of more hungry than normal. I'm gonna grab a, a mix something and eat it Mick quick. One sausage burrito, one sausage McMuffin, one sausage biscuit. It's $3.97 the first one, thank you. Thank you for this food. Thank you for this day that we have. I pray that Forge gets fixed up real quick and that the Damascus billets go really well and uh, help us to make up some lost time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I have no idea if I'm gonna wanna do more swords or not until I do this sword. After I do this sword, I should have a good idea if I wanna do more or not. Right now, I mean, it really could go either way. I could love it or I could hate it. <laughs> I don't know that I'm necessarily gonna love spending even more time on each project. I already spent a lot of time on projects. This is just adding a lot more time, which means I'll make less pieces. Like if I was doing swords like this all year, I'd just make like, I'd make like one piece every quarter. <laughs> I don't think I'm nervous about it warping because I know it's going. It will be warping and I can fix it. I've been making so many big knives now that each one of them, I mean, I expect them to warp. I expect it, they're gonna warp. So I don't have to worry about it warping because I know it's going to warp. I'm gonna do what I can to minimize the warpage, but uh, I've got a bunch of tips and tricks up my sleeve. I am a little concerned about, let's say this is the cutting edge. So they always warp this way. The really long ones I've been doing also have been warping this way a little bit. You kind of have to grind that straight. And I'm a little concerned possibly about the sword warping that way because it's a lot harder to straighten warpage that goes this way. I mean, you gotta like pretty much just grind it straight or something and, and if it's a sword, then it could do that a lot, which means I'd have to lose a lot of width on the sword. So that's, that's the biggest concern warpage wise. It will warp this way, but I can get that out easy enough. Need to get this Damascus going though, because I feel like I've uh, been work, started this sword project a week ago. So far, got a design figured out and barely got started on the first part of the billet. The rest of that have been sick, or spending a long time on the design, or just having a hard time getting the getting the Damascus started because the forge breaking and stuff too. Mixing up some Satanite and I gotta cut out some insta wool for the lid uh, that we just bought. We should cut the lid out before I mix up the Satanite. So I might put a little bit of Satanite on the kale wool to help protect it. That is a lot of kale wool. I think I'm gonna grind the uh, grind this down a little bit so the K wool can be flush or sticking up past flush a little bit. It's one inch, a one inch layer will only fill it up to like there probably so it won't sit all the way down on the forge. But if we grind like a half inch of this off, then the cable should sit all the way up against the forge real nice. Should probably try to cut these off or something too, break them off. Man, that was a lot more work than I thought it was gonna be. Ah, uh, wrist. I got the lid done, I think. Put a layer of Satanite down on the, the kale wool that was on there. Then I put a layer on the other side of this piece and then I stuck them both together. And uh, just putting a protective coating on it now. I'd like to put a pretty thick coating on here, but I'm, I'm uh, almost out of Satanite. And I need to, I still need to coat that with uh, as much as I can get on there. That refractory we put on there is super crumbly. It's just like you touch it and it like turns to powder. So I'm, I hope it works. I don't know. It really seems soft and powdery so far, but maybe it'll like harden up or something after it's fired, maybe. It's not even sticking. It's just kind of running off. I got a bad feeling about this. Let's see how it holds up here in a little bit, or at least the short term. 
We'll see if, we'll see if it'll hold up for the short term. So crumbly and powdery. Got the forge all patched up, getting ready to turn it on and um, forge weld out that second billet that we weren't able to do yesterday and see how the forge holds up short term uh, right here in a couple minutes. Righty tidy, lefty loosey, except for with propane. So, yeah, <laughs> tighten up the uh, regulator for the propane going to the forge. Ooh, two spins. Turn on the propane valve. Get it lit. Turn on the oxygen. Make sure the forge won't blow out the flame. Okay, definitely want to stay a good distance away because there's going to be a lot of dust blowing out of there. Fresh meat's back on the menu, boys.